Welcome, everybody. So I think people will continue to join, but while we're getting ready, I want to welcome everyone back. And you have probably noticed that the topics for our webinars so far have really focused on the four pillars of health and wellness, stress management, nutrition, sleep, and exercise. But the session we had on exercise in July with Dr. Bilchik was a little more focused on athletes. And a lot of you had said to us, what about me? I have medical problems, I'm older. Some of you are wheelchair bound on oxygen. Can I still exercise? And especially in the pandemic, it's really been challenging for many of us to find a way to stay active. So I'm really pleased today to bring someone who actually has overcome her own health challenges, Lynn McVie, a patient of mine, who's gonna to talk to you about exercising through limitations. And before we get to Lynn, I just wanna remind you next Wednesday, we don't have a webinar, but the following week, September 9th, we'll start back up with Dr. Peter Wayne, who is the head of the Osher Center for Alternative Therapy at Brigham and Women's. And he's gonna be talking about Tai Chi and healthy aging. But today I wanna to welcome Lynn McVie, a personal trainer and a, a patient at the Lounge Group who's gonna talk about exercise for the couch potato. So Lynn, it's all you. Thank you. Hello everyone. Um, thank you for um, tuning in today. It's good to um, be able to talk about one of my favorite subjects, which is exercising, even when you don't feel like it sometimes. Um, so I'm really going to go through a few different things today. Um, let me give you an overview of what I'm going to talk about. Oops. Sorry about that. <laughs> Where did it all go wrong already? Here we go. Let me just close this down. Sorry. And I can't get rid of my screen share. It's not a good start. Let me go back to this and then, sorry, I can't unscreen unshare my screen here. Let's have a look. Do you want to stop? Yeah, could we just... Um, so if you want to stop sharing, so just the little green button. There we go. How's that? That's great. That's just you now. Okay. Can you see my screen or not? Now we just see you. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, my Zoom window has disappeared. There we go. Let me try and get this back again. Sorry, people, technology is not my thing. You're doing awesome. As I keep um, repeating to um, the doctors on this day, I'm much better at exercising than I am at using computers. So I do apologize. Um, okay. Just out this and back into Zoom. I've lost you guys completely now. Okay, let me try again. Share screen. I'm afraid it's not letting me do it now at all, and I don't know why. So you're hitting share screen? Yes. And and it doesn't do it. Well. Have you got it now? No, we still see you. Oh, there we go, perfect. That's the screen. Okay, but I need that to be bigger. So it's. I'm so sorry. No, you're fine. So Sydney, where it says cancel the spotlight video, Sydney, can you cancel the spotlight video? Got it. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> that's perfect. Okay. Okay. Let's begin again. Hopefully. So a little bit about me to start with, and a little bit about my background. Um. And then we will go into what we mean by exercise, um, reasons of why we want to exercise in the first place, um, how we go about that if maybe we don't feel like we are athletes. Um, a lot of us feel that we are just not in that category and therefore this does not apply to us. Um, then we'll talk about different movements that we can do, things that we can do from home, nothing complicated or crazy, but movements that are really good for everyday life. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about how we go about planning those workouts, how you get started on a very basic level. 
And then we will have some time at the end for questions, if anybody has any specific questions they want to ask. So, first things first, um, me. I am from Edinburgh in Scotland. I moved here with my husband and two small children for six months in 2012. Um, as you can tell from the fact we're now at 2020, um, that went quite well and we're still here now. Um, we've since grown our family to have two dogs and a rabbit in our family as well. Um, and we've settled into life here, which was very unexpected. We did not intend to be here long term at all. Um, when we moved here, we really moved into a different group of people, both socially, from a hobby perspective. The people we met happened to be very active. They were um, very physically fit and we just got caught up in this wave of activity. So I found myself with two small children um, at a time of my life where I did not expect to be focused on fitness. I became very focused on fitness. And first of all, it started off as a hobby and then it became something I was really passionate about. And then I ended up retraining um, to become a coach, to work with people on both fitness and on nutrition, which shocked nobody more than myself. This was not ever something I intended to do. Um, about two years ago, I experienced a rapid downshift in health. Um, I Just my general health began to um, track in the wrong direction. And from there, um, I discovered that I had contracted mono. Um, but when my mono didn't go away and things were getting better, not worse, and um, the doctors started to dig into things a little more. And it turned out that I had contracted um, Lyme disease and a, another few tick-borne infections along the way. Um, that had also led to me having um, thyroid issues. And I also um, developed a, an issue which brought me to um, the Lyme group for um, some cardiologist appointments. So amongst all of these issues that I had with my health, um, I, it, this really impacted obviously being physically fit. I was chronically ill at this point. Um, I had been ill for probably two years before that, um, but had you know, kept on going through it without realizing anything was seriously wrong. Um, so that really, um, it, it got to a bad point where I had an IV line put in, I was having daily IV antibiotics and, and I was really unable to do a lot of the things I was used to doing in my otherwise active life. Um, but through that time where things were complicated with my health, one of, with my health, one of the things that I focused on myself was trying to um, find, find ways of keeping moving. Because I knew that at the end of this, not only did I want to feel um, able to do some things, I wanted to do all of the things that I had done before. I wanted to really focus on all of the activities that I had loved doing before. I wanted to get involved in activities with my family. And I wanted to be able to work out the way I did before, which for me is probably a little crazier than, than other people um, are interested in doing. But I wanted those things. I didn't just want basic health, um, which at times felt ridiculous and probably also a little self-indulgent that that's what I was focused on. But it was what kept me going through a, a difficult time. Um, so I'll go into a little more detail about how I, I took charge of that later on. But um, as a spoiler to the whole thing, just to let you know, um, it, it, I took control and it, it went pretty well and things were in a much better place. So we'll talk a bit more detail uh, in a bit more detail about that later. So first of all, um, in terms of exercising for other people, I, I like to look at what we are defining as exercise. So if we're saying that exercise is any activity that's requiring physical effort, anything that's um, carried out to sustain or improve our health or fitness. So that's the, that's the definition of what exercise is. But what do we mean by that? So running a marathon, training for the Olympics, all of these things are physical fitness, absolutely. Anything sports specific, people who are playing in the NFL or they're playing soccer, all of these things definitely require fitness. But we also need fitness in our everyday lives. So what I um, will be referring to as functional fitness is the thing that we are looking to improve because we want to be able to move better in our daily lives. So the definition of that would be, as you can see there, movements based on real world situational biomechanics. So to put it another way, movements that we find in our daily life. Lynn, 
The yeah. slides aren't advancing. We're still seeing the um, the main slide. Oh, you are? Yeah. I see the main one with the couch potatoes. What about now? Because I just am clicking the share. So it's the Google Slides one. So I think you need to hit slideshow on your Google Slides. Um, I'm so sorry. That's okay. Um, it's not letting me move it along at all. Um, so you're in your share screen? Yeah, and it says it's sharing. It is sharing, it's just it's not advancing. Um, yeah, it is when, I, when I'm moving it, that's the... Hmm. What about if... Then do you want to try clicking on the slide underneath the main one? Because we're seeing the few slides on the side. Um, it's now not letting me go back to... Okay, now we see part of a slide. Another option is if it's in a Google Drive, you can give us access and we can do it. Okay, because I it, it says to me that I'm sharing and when I'm going through them, it's changing on my screen. Wasn't that weird? Yeah, so I, 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 see, I see it changing <laughs> and, and I can still see. Um, so it, it maybe it's your Wi-Fi because I know your Wi-Fi was acting funny. Early. Yeah. Just so everyone knows at 2.30 we practiced this whole thing and it was perfect. And of course, why don't you, if it's Google Docs, share it to Sydney and me and then okay. we can control it. And then we'll just, we're going to just take a two minute break and let Lynn do that and then we'll reconvene. Um, and that, that should work fine because we can hear you. And then you can just, you can keep talking until we get to the pictures if you want to. But uh, uh, okay. okay, I will just try and share this just now. Um, that looked better, what you were just doing. Okay. I just don't know why it's not advancing because it's telling me it's advancing, which is... It may be that there's a lag in the Wi-Fi or something. Are you close to your router? I'm right next to it. Okay. Let's try that one more time. And if that doesn't work, just share us your slide deck. Um, it's asking me to reload the whole thing. So maybe that's the problem. Maybe that's... Yeah, so just email it or share it to us. And while you're doing that, um, I think I can, I'm going to share in the chat with everybody a couple of really good apps that I've come across that some patients have shared for exercise. So those of you who are Medicare, there's something called Silver Sneakers Go. And just, Lynn, when you're ready, just interrupt me and I'll stop talking. Okay, I'm sorry. You're fine. Um, so Silver Sneakers Go, it's a free app for Medicare participants that has yoga, walking programs, stretching programs, and it's really good and very user friendly. Um, and it goes through the different types of exercise, which are flexibility, strength, cardio, and balance. Like those are the four major types of exercise that are really important, especially as people get older. So flexibility, strength, cardio, and balance. And so Silver Sneakers Go is a good one. Um, and then a lot of you have used Leslie Sansone. I've been talking to some of you about that. Leslie Sansone has a YouTube video that is really great for older people. There's one where you can exercise inside your home, walking inside your home, et cetera. Is this working now? It says Lynn McVeigh has started screen sharing, but we don't see. You're not saying anything. <laughs> oh dear! It's it, it looks perfect on my screen. It looks exactly like it did before. Yeah. No. It always. I've sent it to Sydney as well. Perfect. Okay. So um, 
you can load it and then Lynn, you'll just say advance the screen or advance. Okay. I'm sorry. No problem. I also think Zoom is just overloaded. Too many people are using it all at once. Yeah. Oh. How's that? Is that working? Perfect. Okay. That looks like it's working to me. It's working now. I just yep. shut it down and reloaded the whole thing. Perfect. All right. All so if you want to continue. Okay. That's okay. Great. So. Thank you. Uh, we were up to so functional movements. Um, so movements based on real world situational biomechanics. So to put it another way, movements that we find in our daily lives. So standing up, sitting down, picking something up off the ground, putting something up on a high shelf, things that we as humans do when we are moving and things that we're doing in daily life. Um, sorry, it's going crazy again. Okay. So if we have a um, look at reasons why we would exercise. So one of the first courses that I attended when I was training to be um, a coach was, um, they used an analogy in that that really caught my attention. So what they were talking about was that we all want to be fit so that we can live long, healthy, independent lives. So the things that they had us thinking about were as we age to live independently, we want to be able to get ourselves up again if we fall down. If we trip over something and fall on the floor, we need to be able to get up off the floor. So in the gym, we would call that a burpee. We also want to be able to get out of a chair. We want to be able to go to the bathroom independently. All of these things. That in the gym, we would call a squat. So these are things that we want to incorporate in our everyday workouts so that we are keeping strong and fit to build muscle for the things that we need to do to take care of our bodies and to live independently as we age. So those things are useful for both building muscle and for cardio fit, cardiovascular fitness right now, but they also are working on our range of motion as we are getting older to make sure that we can still do all of these things. So as you can see from these two pictures here, hopefully if you're seeing my screen correctly, um, we have one picture of a small child squatting beautifully, which is how we are all born. We can all squat when we're born. This is something that we can do naturally as humans. As adults or even as older children, we lose the ability to do this because we use chairs, we sit on sofas, we drive cars, we do all of these things that naturally lose those body patterns or the movement patterns, the range of motion that we need to be able to do these things. If you look at the other picture of an adult doing that, that is a position that most adults, certainly um, in the Western world, find very difficult to hold for any, any period of time. That's just not a natural position for, for most of us. And that's something that we want to try and be able to bring back into our life. Our squat may not look like that, but it's something that we should be working towards so that we are using our body the way our body is meant to be used. So that being said, if we look at some um, health benefits of exercise and why we typically are told that we should exercise. So within a list of common reasons why we would exercise, the first one that we often hear about is um, because it, it controls our weight. So that's something that we're encouraged to do because it takes control of our weight. It might help us lose weight if we're carrying some extra weight. So that's great, but it feels like a really hard first step to take sometimes. So let's look at some other ideas. So the next one on the list would be that it helps prevent or improve existing health conditions. I've already touched on this a little bit. Yes, that's definitely a thing, but when we're already feeling maybe a little beaten down by that health condition, maybe we're a bit tired, maybe because of the health condition, we're carrying that extra weight that we turned about, that we talked about in the first point. These things in themselves, we know we should exercise, but it doesn't really help us always take that first step that we need to take. So from there, um, let's, let's look at some other ones. So I'm naturally very impatient in life. That's just in my nature. So for me, I want to go for the things that are going to have some instant, instant success for me. So if we talk about improving your mood, that's really starting to talk my language. That's something that can really start 
from day one of exercising. You can notice that you're getting improved energy. I see that all the time with the clients that I work with. First of all, they come to see me for a couple of workouts a week and then they start asking me what workouts they could do on the days that they're not working out with me. Or they ask me for ideas of workouts they can do with their partner. Or maybe they start bringing their partner to work out with me as well. Or they might want to work out with their kids or their grandkids. Or they want some advice on how they start getting involved in doing some other exercise as well. It really starts a snowball effect because once you start to improve your mood, your energy improves and suddenly lo and behold, you're becoming a more of an athlete than maybe you expected. So those are the sorts of things that are really good to see quickly because it boosts your confidence, it gets you moving. From there, we also start to notice that our sleep improves. When our sleep improves and we're getting more high quality sleep, that also adds to the mood boosting and the energy effects that we're already seeing. So again, that's a great one that gets us moving, gets us keep or keeps us moving, I should say. From there, all the lovely positive changes that we're starting to see, we start to build confidence. Maybe we see it changes in our, not only our energy, but also our health, health markers, our body composition. Maybe our friends, our family start to notice changes in us. Maybe even your doctor notices a difference and says, hey, what's going on? Something looks good here. Have you changed something? Are you feeling good? That starts to make us feel better. It improves our confidence and we kind of want to keep going with that. From there, most important thing to me in the whole exercise situation is that it can be really fun and it's really important that we make it fun. A lot of people think that sounds ridiculous. Fun and exercise often don't go together for people, but we need to make it fun. You're going to hear me repeat this again and again throughout this because it's really important that we make it fun. It may not be fun to begin with, but it will give you a sense of satisfaction that you did it and that is something to build on. That we count in the beginning as fun for sure. So we can build from there. So next thing, as I already said, sometimes we feel that we are not athletes. We are not people who fall into that category. So in that case, how do you start? You're not an athlete. You're maybe not even a former athlete. So how do we do that? So many people think that it's too late to start. As I already mentioned, I did not come to my love of exercise until I was in my mid thirties, which is not that late in life, but compared to the people around me, it was late. They had all been exercising all of their lives and I, to begin with, wasn't sure how I felt about that or if this was something that I could grow to love. Um, it was definitely before that a necessary evil for me. It was something that I felt I should do. I knew it was good for my health, but I didn't necessarily enjoy it. I think that would be fair to say. Um, what I would say about that is that obviously I've, I've mentioned already finding fun in something is important. It's also really important in the beginning just to be consistent. Consistency is really key, forming those good habits and just showing up and doing, doing the work, however much work that is in the beginning, it's not very much. You will check the box, you'll feel good about that. And once you've started to build that into your routine, that's the thing that really will just, it just becomes something that you do and part of your day. Most people that I work with find that once we've developed that habit, they start to look forward to their sessions. Or maybe they just tell me that, I'm not sure which. Um, even if to begin with, it's for that sense of accomplishment that I touched on um, and for feeling proud of themselves for doing it. And they can go home and tell their families what they did. And they discuss, you know, the workouts that they did, what they achieved, how things are improving. If they're lifting more weights than they lifted before, if they're moving faster, if they're able to do something that they couldn't do before, that's a big deal. And again, these are all health markers. These are all things that are important. Um, so these are, this is really where I start to see the magic happen with people once they get into a routine, they're being consistent and they start to see, as I keep mentioning, the snowball effect of what happens with that. Um, again, I know I'm repeating myself, but you have to find a way to make it at least slightly enjoyable for yourself to keep showing up. So play some music, have someone work out with you, tell someone that you're going to work out. Sometimes just the accountability of saying, I am going to be active today. If you say it to your partner, your friend, your dog, it doesn't matter who you say it to. Tell somebody out loud that you're going to do it. Make that commitment and then you will feel that you need to, to go ahead and do that. And afterwards, you'll be so happy that you did. 
challenge yourself to do it before your day starts or before you have your cup of coffee or whatever it is that you need to do to try and fit that into your day. So talking about functional movements before, movements that, are, that represent the way that humans move day to day. So I'm going to talk you through some different movements um, and I'm going to show you some videos of what that looks like so that if you want to try them as I'm talking, then you can try them at home or you can um, you know, think about trying this sort of thing day to day in your own life. If you think about how, as you're watching the videos, think about how many times a day you might do similar movements in what you're doing. Um, because it's really important that, that we relate this to real life. This isn't working out just for the sake of working out so you can tell your doctor that you work out. This is really, really truly applicable to life. Um, so once you have seen these videos, that will give you an idea of how you can incorporate these into your workouts and that's something that you can take forward. And then we'll talk about how you could, you could plan those things and actually make that into a daily workout. So here we have, hopefully this will work, but you should be able to see, nope, that did not work, um, a video here of somebody doing a squat. So it's that movement that we talked about before. It's a key to living independently. It's what we're doing when we're sitting in a chair, when we're standing up again, or when we're going to the bathroom. We need to keep these muscles working and also be strong enough to support our own body weight. So when we're standing up from a sitting position. Your squat may not look like this right now. It may be something that takes a while to work towards. Um, it definitely is something that you can adapt in different ways to where you are at right now. For some people, they find it easier to use a chair. Put a chair behind, sit down, stand up again. Do that a few times, you're working out. But these are all really important things for us to be able to do. And you start to see progress with this really, really quickly if this is something that you start to do. So here, I've used the picture here of the weightlifter. And then I also have a video here of a regular person. This is exactly the same movement that we will be looking at. It's just a different thing that's being picked up. Either way, it's an object being picked up from the ground and lifted up, which we all do, whether it's a pair of socks, whether it's groceries, whether it's a package that's been left on the front porch, we all pick things up all the time. So doing it safely and correctly is really important. And if we can start to incorporate lifting something that is a little heavier so that we can build those really strong muscles, then so much the better because we can keep keep control of our own lives for longer and keep lifting our own groceries or our own packages or whatever it is that we need to lift. So here's the video here of this one. So there we go, that's the deadlift. As I say, you're probably more used to seeing it like this one here. So then from there, sorry, that skipped ahead there. Let's see if I can go back there, oh, yep. So this one, I have two different um, movements to show here. It's, well, it's actually both the same movement, but to give you an indication of how you would typically see it in the gym, this is the burpee that I spoke about before. To give you an example of how this is used in an everyday environment, this is the one I talked about. You need to be able to get yourself off the ground if you fall down. I was lucky enough a few years ago to be coaching my mother in a workout when she was visiting from Scotland. And when I suggested to her that we do some burpees, she thought this was an astonishing idea and that she was way too old to do a burpee. She would never be able to do a burpee. So um, I asked her to lay down on the floor and then stand up again and then told her that she'd done a burpee and she couldn't believe it. She couldn't believe she did a burpee. So now we call them lay down stand ups when she's working out and she is much more comfortable with calling them that. But as you will see here, it's exactly the same thing. So this is the faster version here. So that's the version my mother thought was not possible for her. This is the, the more, um, approachable lay down stand up. But both are equally valuable and um, they're both doing the same thing. They're getting us all the way from the ground to standing up again, which is really important both from a safety and from a strength perspective. So this one here, 
I've tried to show a little bit more of how we can have fun with this and how the same movement can look very different. So at home, often we are picking things up from the floor and then we're putting them on high shelves. We're putting our groceries away, things like that. This is the same movement that this guy over here is doing with his heavy barbell, except we're using everyday objects. So this fun video shows us how anybody with any household objects can do exactly the same type of movement. So I'll show you this one. Put them over your head. One, back down to the ground. Up again. Two, good. Again. So with any object, we can pick things up safely, hold them overhead, and we can build strength that way. It doesn't need to be in a gym setting. It doesn't need to be with heavy weights. We can use whatever we have around to make this a functional movement that is useful in our everyday lives. So we have just looked at a squat, a deadlift, a burpee, and a press overhead. So although that's just a few movements that I have shown you, it is a, a very clear way to see that these are all things that we do, all of us, in our lives all the time. So these are things that you can use to build your own workouts. So the way that I would always recommend that people do that is by keeping things simple to start with. Give yourself some time, book it into your day when you know that you're going to have a little bit of time there. Make sure that you do some warming up before, whether that's marching on the spot, you could try some jumping jacks, you can do, you can push your vacuum cleaner around the house, whatever it is to get you moving and to, to get things warmed up. You want to physically feel a little bit warm, do some stretches if, you, if you're able to do that. And then from there, set a clock for something like five minutes and try doing five squats and five um presses overhead and maybe five lay down stand ups or something like that. Try and do that as many times as you can in the five minutes till the alarm goes off on your clock. Then you've done a five minute workout. If you do something like that a few times a week, then all of a sudden you're incorporating these movements a few times a week. Once that starts to feel a little easier, you can either add a few minutes and instead of doing five minutes, you could do seven minutes or you could do five minutes, but do it four times a week or five times a week really try and um, you know keep track of your progress so that you see clearly that you're getting stronger and that you're feeling fitter um, and keep track of how many times you're able to to do that in your five minutes so that once you start doing it more times in the five minutes you'll be you'll be so happy that you're seeing progress um, make sure that you're varying what you do don't do the same thing every single time because you'll get bored you'll get bored very quickly and you won't feel like doing your workouts anymore but also routine is, is really the enemy in terms of trying to train our bodies. They like to do different things all the time. Your body will respond better if you mix things up. So you can stick to your five minutes, but do different movements each time. Try and get creative about what you're doing. Use different household objects. You could, if you've just been to the store and you have a bag of potatoes, use potatoes to do your deadlift. You can really mix it up. If you want to add in some walking, then you could walk for, for two minutes and then you could try some squats or you could come you could walk back up your pathway if you live in a house lift some bags of groceries there and then go out for another two minute walk and come back if you have stairs in your house you could incorporate climbing the stairs or if you don't have stairs you could step over something either um, to build balance and agility you could be stepping up onto a step stool Get creative about the things you have at home. You do not need a gym to be able to do this, but you will start to see progress very quickly. Make sure that you make it fun for yourself. So play some great music. As I said before, ask your spouse or your partner or um, have a friend um, do it on a Zoom call. One of the positive things about this COVID world that we're living in is that we get to do things virtually that we've never done before. So if if we've all learned to be able to do these Zoom calls, then have a buddy do a Zoom workout with you or um, something like that. Something that makes it slightly more fun because you're getting some conversation in there or some music that you love. Um, I always say to my kids, it's like a play date for grown-ups. This is what we do for fun with our friends as we meet up outside at the moment because that's what we can do. And we work out together because that's fun and it's it's you know gives us that sense of play that that we enjoy. So something more to think about with this is that presuming everything goes well here and sorry my slides have gone crazy again. 
Let's see if I can get that back. Oh no, there we go. Sorry about that. This does not want to share properly. I'm sorry, I'm just going to skip down to where we were. So suddenly we have our great habits and they all go. It didn't skip. Sorry, you're still on the. the I am. I don't know why it keeps doing this. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Um, just, just refresh the page. Then double click on the slide you want and hit present. Problem is, every time I do it, it gets rid of Zoom and Zoom disappears from me and then I can't get back to the Zoom page to present. <laughs> um, Cindy, did you get the slides? Do you want to put them on yours? I didn't get it shared to my email address. Um, oh, no, I am because I sent it to there as well. Um, I'm sorry, it just doesn't want to, it keeps just... I think we saw, we saw most of the important stuff, so you could just wrap up. Okay, um, let me just get back to... Okay, okay, um, so when life gets complicated, so assuming that this, um, let's fast forward from this webinar today, you're all very inspired, I'm sure you want to start building your workouts into your day, Fast forward a few weeks or a few months and suddenly you're working out, you're doing it regularly, you're enjoying it, dare I even say, and you're starting to think that maybe I wasn't so crazy after all, suggesting that this might be something that you could do. All of a sudden, something happens. Life gets busy, schedules get changed, or suddenly you're hit with a complicated period of health. Things feel a little tougher and things start to slide and you lose track of where you're at. Um, Suddenly exercise feels like a luxury and it feels like something that you can't fit into your day. Um, it definitely becomes harder to make time for yourself and it became, becomes difficult to find that time for yourself. I definitely understand all of this. This is where I was at with my health difficulties that I spoke about before. Take a moment, breathe, reassess the situation and try and remember all the reasons that you wanted to do this in the first place, because I'm sure there's not just one reason. There's often more than one reason why we want to do this. So once we've had that moment, we're gonna refocus. Assuming that you've spoken to your doctor and all is well for you to continue with your, with your program and to get back to being a, an athlete and a newfound worker outer, then from there, we're gonna refocus and remember that any exercise is better than no exercise. So even if your five minutes had grown to 10 minutes to 15 minutes and that's where you were at, you go back to the start, wherever you need to be, two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, wherever you need to start from, that is the place to start. When I was sick, what I tried to remind myself of was that there was times when I was not in control of what was going on in my body. Between the medications, the infections I had, and it felt like my body was really rebelling against me and I was not in control of that and as well as being an impatient person as I already men mentioned I'm also really stubborn and I did not like that I didn't like the fact that I wasn't in charge of my body and that I didn't get to say what happened or what I did so after dwelling on this for a while I am um, to, to not let this get out of control and to not let it affect my mental health in a negative way I decided that I needed to control the things that I could control, which didn't feel like very much at that time. But for me, that was, I could get some exercise and I could control the food that I was eating. So I could choose to eat healthier foods and I could choose to make sure I got some exercise every day. So whether that was taking my dogs for a walk or whether that was doing five minutes of squats or um, presses or whatever it was I could do that day, it wasn't always successful I definitely wouldn't say that every single day I found it easy or that every single day I had um, the best experience some days it definitely made me feel more tired than it should um, I definitely had to strike that balance 
However, it made me feel in control of the situation and that made me feel really good and it made me feel that I was in charge of my health again um, in any small way. So I think that's the thing that we need to think about when, when we hit that situation where things are falling apart. Rather than thinking, I can't work out for an hour in the gym because the gyms are closed or because I'm not allowed to go there because I have a health condition. Think about how we can reframe that and what we can do at home to take control of that. And, and that is something that we can definitely all do. It boosts our mood, it makes us feel better, and it makes us feel like we've checked something off our list for the day in doing something active, which always feels good. Um, so, in conclusion, I think it's really important that this is something that you make time for right now because your future self will thank you. This is something that isn't going to feel easy to do right now, but fast forward a few weeks and all of a sudden you're starting to feel better and you're really glad that you made that start. I think don't overthink it. Um, anything is better than nothing and starting off with a few minutes a day or a few minutes three times a week, whatever that is for where you are right now, is brilliant and everybody will be so happy that you did it, people will be proud of you and you will really feel better that you're doing it. Um, do not let routine make things boring for you. As I said before, there's plenty of ways that you can um, mix things up, that you can um, use what you have at home to make things interesting. Um, make sure that it stays interesting because as soon as it starts to get boring, it's easy for things to slide. Um, and find some fun in creating new habits. It's something that you can really start to track and it can become you know, something that you focus on that gives you, believe it or not, it could be something that gives you a lot of pleasure and a lot of pride in what you're doing. That's all, any questions? Thank you, Lynn, that was wonderful. Um, really inspirational. So I really did appreciate how you structured your approach to talking about exercise and I think hit so many important chords there that I think resonate with all of us. So thank you for that. Um, I think all of us in the past six months that we've been living in these uncertain times have really felt um, the pressure of doing everything the right way and the way we're supposed to. And I think the way that you've encouraged us to reframe what we are, our goals and our success um, are probably important for motivating all of us and for, for really um, being aware of our spirit and emotional balance and how much that is also affected with exercise. So, um, so so thank you for that, um, really inspirational. Uh, there are a number of questions about kind of your practical approach. So I thought it, it might be useful if you kind of, um, maybe if we took one exercise and you like the squat, which I think scares a lot of people, we don't wanna hurt our knees, we don't wanna hurt our back, and you could maybe give us a framework about how you actually think specifically about that movement and you might string those together. Does that feel yeah, absolutely. Um, useful? Yeah, because I think that would be helpful, at least for me personally, so. Okay, um, so I think squats for a long time were kind of demonized in the exercise world. We were told that we should not be squatting low, that we, you know, it really wasn't good for our knees. It was not something we should be doing, certainly not past, you know, a certain age, which I think at some point was like, 25. <laughs> it was really not something that was encouraged for us to do. Um, over time, the science has changed in that regard in that it's now something we are actively encouraged to do. Um, it does not need to involve heavy weights as we often see people doing, but weights are always good because they also strengthen our bones, which, you know, we want to incorporate some of that. Um, but to start with, the basic squat is such an easy thing to do at home because like I said before, you can use a chair and you can sit down in your chair and then you can stand up again and you can repeat that a few times and then you can move on to doing something else like you could do a plank or you could do one of the other movements we talked about today and then go back and do a few more sets of squats. So you can really build, even if you have very little strength in your legs, it's something you can start to build very quickly just with the simple act of getting in and out of your chair, um, which seems so such a basic thing day to day until it's something you start to struggle to do. And once you start to struggle with that, sometimes you feel it's too late for you to then build that strength. Um, but there's so much science now behind older people working out. And there's, I've watched so many videos of people into their 90s improving their squats and their day-to-day -day life 
from starting with something as simple as um, sitting in a chair, sometimes even higher than a chair. Sometimes you need to build up the height so that it's not as low down as a chair in order to get that range of motion. Um, but it's something that builds quickly and then your confidence builds, which is good. I think that is, is wonderful. So sometimes even uh, like a counter stool to Absolutely. standing is a, a good place to start. Yep. And or a chair with some cushions or some books, anything that brings you to a height that feels like something you can repeat a few times at a time. And if you need to rest for a few minutes in between and then do another set of three or five or 10, wherever you're at, that is fabulous. Whatever works is good. So that's very practical um, advice for all of us. And I just want to reiterate what we've talked about multiple times on this podcast that um, from a cardiology standpoint, we really recommend 150 minutes of moderate aerobic activity, such as walking. So that's 30 minutes a day, five days a week. And then on top of that, we recommend two days of strengthening exercises, right? So you could do some combination of these wonderful exercises that Lynn's presented, you know, twice a week and just think about where you would move the bar, committing to that for the next three months, right? So as we're thinking in terms of the pandemic, right, and we're almost in September, you know, by December then, think about, you know, where we could really have your strength and your functional status committing, you know, to doing this a few times a week. Um, I typically encourage people to fast forward a decade and think about how they want to be moving. Wow. Um, and, you know, sometimes we really have the blinders on and we just can't get out of our own way in the today, right? And if we take a step back and think, oh gosh, okay, in that decade, you know, I, I, you know, I don't want to be relying on uh, a cane or, you know, I'm moving with a cane, but I really want to be able to, you know, walk down the steps without clutching the railing, you know, wherever your, your point is. But I think it's um, important for us to really set those goals. And you've encouraged us to do that, Lynn. Um, I'm thinking about that burpee exercise because I have um, personally hated burpees and I am uh, open-minded to think about them through this new lens that you're encouraging us. Um, but I've heard these really likened to the toddler exercise, right? So for grandparents that are now dealing with the toddler or any of us that have then babysat a, a young person that, you know, we're not used to dealing with that age group, that burpee activity really is so um, useful. Um, so I, I thought it was uh, helpful to go back and revisit how, what you said about the squat. Maybe you can just do an overview about the burpee too and kind of, you know, attention to getting up off the floor and the safe way to do that. Yeah, of course. Um, so basically, they're, the, the lowering yourself to the floor can be the, the part that people are afraid of. They're, they don't know how to safely get down on the floor to do the burpee in the first place. So I would say always use an abundance of caution the first time you're doing it to make sure that you're not going to you know, hit the ground too hard and, and hurt yourself and put yourself off burpees for life. Um, but in whichever way you can, lower yourself to the ground and then push yourself back up again, however you need to do that. So for some people that will mean coming up onto their knees, for some people one knee at a time. For some people they find it easier to get one leg kind of more, get their foot planted and then push up with their arms. It really depends on upper body strength where people find that easier and also on hip mobility. If you have got progressively tighter and tighter hips as you age, it becomes hard to get your legs into the position to push yourself up. Um, Again, the changes not only in strength, and but the changes in mobility are something I see, particularly with the older clients that I see. Um, they are astonished by the fact that they can start to move their body in a way that they maybe haven't for a decade or so. Um, and a lot of that comes from just us spending time in stretches and doing basic things as well as burpees. We do basic things in the gym, like I talked about, like stepping over things side to side or practicing stepping up and stepping down off something that's you know only a few inches high because that's a more practical application for um, loading your knees. When you're stepping up and then stepping back down in you know reversing, when you're coming downstairs facing front, you're loading your knees in a different way. So if we can practice that in the gym, going up and down, 
same idea as the burpee, we're loading the joints differently and we're getting them prepared better for life. That was a long answer, but hopefully that helped. <laughs> No, I think that was um, that was very helpful, and I know Dr. Lee Lewis is waiting to jump into this um, conversation too. But I'm going to, you know, reframe my approach to to burpees with that encouragement. Dara, any thoughts on this? No. So I I wanted to also say that for some people there are specific medical conditions that you have to really be careful of, and it may make sense if you're really unsure to work with a, a personal trainer or a physical therapist who's knowledgeable about those things. For people who are just out of shape and wanna get in shape but are generally healthy, you could really do a lot of this on your own. But it's sort of a case by case thing. So one of the questions in the chat was, how do we prevent injuries and overuse? And what pace would you accelerate at? And I, don't, I always learned that you, know, you should do it till you feel a little bit of a burn and then stop and wait. But if you don't feel anything, you're maybe not pushing quite hard enough. And if you're really, really, really in pain and you're in pain for three days later, you push too hard. Yes. So, you know, you want to start where you are and then build up from there, wherever that starting point is. But would that be a safe uh, gauge for someone who wants to do this on their own to start at a place where you could do something maybe five to ten times and then have to stop and rest? Does that mean? I think absolutely. I think a lot of it is individual and also the, the speed at which you start to accelerate in the number of reps you're doing or the number of times that you're working out will vary from person to person. Um, also, the recovery time between workouts. Some people can work out a little bit every day and do fine. For some people, that is not a good model. Um, the thing that I like to think about, my physical therapist would always say, you can go to pain, but not through pain. So if something starts to feel uncomfortable, that's your guideline. Listen to your body. Don't be a hero. Don't push through. There's always another day to work out. Um, and if you're unsure, and if this is something that you haven't experienced in the past in terms of workout aches and pains and muscular aches, then, then don't push it too hard. You know, start off really slow. As we said, something is better than nothing. So it's better to do something and worry you didn't do enough than completely overdo it feel sore for three days and then not want to work out again. We're doing this to try and incorporate more movement and anything that you, if you work too hard and can't do as much movement, then we're, we're kind of defeating the purpose. Mm. But there are very few medical conditions and very few cardiac conditions where we would tell people not to exercise because in fact, congestive heart failure, atrial fibrillation, coronary disease, all those things, plus arthritis, usually benefits and has a longer life expectancy and a better quality of life if there's a level of moderate exercise and, and moderate fitness. So I encourage everyone, very few of you should say, oh, I can't possibly exercise. Almost everyone should be doing something, right? Yep. Okay. Oh, Lynn, do you want to just also go through the upper extremity one? Because I think this is so helpful just to have you revisit it again. And I, yeah. I do know a lot of people really feel limited with shoulder immobility. So yeah. um, it gives us all pause, right, that we're going to, you know, hurt ourselves doing some yeah, of these, of right? I think particularly, um, certainly the women that I train, um, they find that they are weaker in their upper body than they expect to be. It can take a long time to build and in women it's a much smaller muscle group. So it can be something that we're also afraid to do because we feel that we are weak and we feel that we might not be able to do those things. Um, but it is an essential thing that we want to do, even to be able to brush our own hair. You know, we need to be able to get our arm overhead. We need to get our arms somewhere up here, you know, they need to be able to do that. So first of all, there's definitely a mobility piece here where people can feel that their shoulders are not moving in the right direction or they feel pain when they move their shoulders. So take it slowly. You know, you can also do some stretches beforehand, arm circles or use a broom handle to stretch out overhead and really feel that you're getting your shoulders moving and loose before you do anything. And then just take it slow. Start off, if you're, if you're concerned that you may not be strong enough to lift something, you can also start off just with nothing, just doing, you know, lifting air, as I like to say. You can start off getting used to the movement. Once you start to feel confident with that, then grab something, you know, a water bottle or something that is not heavy, not awkward to hold, and something that you can start to feel confident. The kids that we watched in that video, they were also 
you know, it just, I, I like that video because there's no barrier to entry. There is no wrong way to, to lift up, you know, some laundry detergent or something like that. We can lift that up in the air. If we don't lift it up correctly, or as you saw from them, they didn't get it all the way there. They tried, you know, they're still getting stronger and they're, they're not hurting themselves. And it's, it would be very hard to hurt yourself in that scenario. It's a little different in the gym when we start using things like dumbbells or kettlebells or barbells or things that are metal and can hurt you. Or if you're not picking it up correctly from the ground and you could hurt your back or something like that. But when we're talking about using household objects, um, there's also, like, like Dr. Lee Lewis was saying before, there's so many apps and videos available now of how to do these things at home safely, like the ones that I showed that, you know, we can all give it a go, definitely. Confidence is key. <laughs> um, I have one more question, which is that um, a lot of people are walking outdoors for exercise, especially now that the weather's great. Is there a way that you'd recommend to incorporate some upper body into a walk so that they can still, if they have only 20 minutes, get some upper body in addition to the cardio? Yes, but a lot of people initially when they start working out feel very shy about doing things like that. So one thing that I would say is really good is to start to build it into intervals. So if they're walking, if you walk either, if people are shy about doing it, I speak to my mother-in-law about this because she's a walker and she likes to incorporate other things. So she will walk one minute out from her house, one minute home to her house and do some upper body stuff in her own garden so nobody sees and then go for another walk. Because I would tell her that maybe doing some dips, you know, if you can find a low wall or a bench or something like that. So to do some, some dips, which we didn't see a video of today, or to do some push-ups against a wall, which for most people standing up and leaning against something, um, to do things like that and then carry on walking and every 90 seconds or every minute or every two minutes stop and do something like that. It also makes it a little more interesting. But people can feel very shy about doing this. Mostly what I hear from people is that actually strangers walking by, if they even notice in the first place, they're generally intrigued and they generally are very encouraging, especially right now, I think in COVID times, people see other people exercising and they're, they're happy for them. You know, they're pleased that somebody's out their house and doing something. So I think that's definitely a good way to do it. One thing I would say just in the walking, even without the upper body part, is try and really focus on posture because I'm seeing a lot of people who are, a lot of my clients who are starting to walk, they're walking further than they normally do, but they're starting to hunch a little. So we wanna always remember that we're keeping that core tight and also try and think about having a pencil between your shoulder blades and keeping your shoulders back so that we're walking with a nice, um, a nice posture and that we're encouraging that core strength even while we're walking. That's a, that's really good advice. I, cause I'm a walker and I don't like to go to the gym and do other things, but I do try to sort of hold in my abdomen while I walk and try to like, I don't always remember, but <laughs> remember that. And then you can take advantage of that walk and, and do a lot of different things at the same time. Exactly. Well, this has been great. So inspirational. Um, I'm standing taller just from listening to your presentation. So thank you for that. So um, we'll make sure that we include your contact information in the follow-up email because a number of people have asked um, how they might benefit from your personal services. So we'll make sure we get that out um, to folks. And then Lynn, if uh, additionally you had any websites that you really wanted us to point people too, we'll make sure that we send that out as well. And I can't thank you enough for really sharing such an inspirational perspective with all of us today. This thank you. Really thank great. you for your patience with the technology. Not my favorite thing. <laughs> no, it was uh, merely a hiccup. So thank you for your time and thank you everybody for joining us today. Thank you. We'll see you all right. Bye, everyone. Bye.